If you're currently looking for ways to earn some extra money, then a side hustle can be a really good way of earning a few extra hundred pounds a month or maybe even more on the side of your current job or other full-time commitments. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you five side hustles that are easy to start, can be started by anybody with no previous experience and require little or no money to get started in. And I'm also gonna give you some guidance and tips on how to get started in each one. So the term side hustle is a bit of a new and trendy term, but essentially it just means anything that you do on the side of your current job to earn a bit of extra money on the side. So these are really good because they allow you to not only earn extra money, but you can also learn new skills and you could potentially develop these side hustles into long-term careers or businesses if you want to. But one of the biggest problems with a lot of videos you see on YouTube that talk about side hustles is they mention side hustles that are expensive to start or require lots of previous experience or knowledge in a certain area. So what I wanna do with this video is focus on side hustles that are realistic for anybody to get started in. So I'm not just gonna go and tell you to rent out your second home on Airbnb or start up your own IT consultant and see out of nowhere. And I've thrown in a mixture of online and offline side hustles, and all of these have the potential to make a few hundred pounds a month, if not more. So all of the side hustles on this list contain the following four factors, which I think are really important factors that you need to look for when you're looking to start a side hustle. They can be started quickly. So ideally a side hustle should be able to be started within a few days or a few weeks maybe, and it shouldn't require months of previous study or have some sort of lengthy setup process that delays you from getting started. It should be free or cheap to get started in. So ideally they'll have no setup costs, but if there are some costs involved, I would recommend spending no more than 50 to 100 pounds on getting started, especially if you're a beginner. They should be flexible, meaning that you can easily work them around your current full-time job or other commitments, and they should have some sort of growth potential. And that means that you can potentially increase the pay rate over time, or you could maybe even turn them into a full-time career or business if you want to. So what I'm going to do in this video is run through my list of five side hustles and show you how they fit the criteria of those points I've just mentioned. And then I'm gonna give you some advice on how to get started in them. And as usual with all of my videos, there's gonna be mentions of lots of websites and resources. So if you open up the description below, you'll see See all of those links and you'll also see timestamps to different points in the video so you can jump to them if you want to and while you're down that way if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button not only does it help out the channel but it also means you can save the video in your liked videos which means you can come and refer to it later when you're actually getting started and if you're feeling really generous you could also hit the subscribe button i make lots of videos on these kind of topics around increasing your income and landing the jobs you want so if you're interested in either of those things it could be really helpful to you the first side hustle on this list is online freelancing online freelance Freelancing is providing any kind of digital service to businesses and it's usually done via freelance websites. The work involved could be anything from admin assistants, writing articles, writing copy, data entry, graphic design, research. There really is a huge amount of things you can do in online freelancing. I also really like this because it's something I've done myself and I know that you can get really good results from it if you put in a bit of time and effort. It's really easy to get started in and the flexibility of where and when you can do the work is unbeatable. Firstly, it can be started very quickly. All you need to do is sign up to one of these freelance websites and then you can start bidding for work straight away. It's cheap to start. In fact, it's actually free to start. When you sign up to these websites, there's no initial upfront costs. However, when you start providing services, most websites will take a small percentage of the fee that you charge to the people that you're providing the services to. It's really, really flexible. You can do the work wherever you have have your laptop so you can do it on your lunch break you can do it on the train home you can do it at home of course and there is lots and lots of growth potential with online freelancing because you can learn lots of new skills you can grow those skills improve them you can build your profile within these freelance websites you can gather feedback and as you do that you can slowly start to raise your prices and you could even go on to start a business providing those services outside of the freelance websites. And this is something I can vouch for somewhat because I actually used to work as a freelance writer on one of the websites I'm gonna mention, and I was slowly able to increase my skill set, learn new things, and turn it into a full-time business, which actually replaced my full-time job um, and became my full-time source of income. So there's certainly lots of potential for anyone to grow any of these online services into a business if that's something you want to do. So how do you get started as an online freelancer? Well, the first thing you need to do is sign up to one of the big UK freelance websites. So there are a few that I would recommend going with. Uh, the first one, and my favorite is People Per Hour, which is a really big UK freelance marketplace. It has lots of small business owners on there who are looking for people to provide digital services to them. You've also got places like Fiverr, Bark, Upwork. Uh, there are lots out there, so I will put a list of these in the description description below so you can check them out. And then of course you need to decide what sort of services you're going to offer. So if you have a quick look on some of these websites, have a quick scout around some people's profiles and the job
jobs on there, you'll start to get a good idea of the sort of services that people are looking for. And again, you wanna be looking for things that are in high demand. So one tip I can give you is to try and find services where there is evidence of lots of sales of those particular services. So for example, if you have a look on people per hour here and you're scrolling down and you come across a service here, if you look here, you can see the number of times the service has been sold. Um, so this will give you a good idea of how popular it is and how much demand there is for it. And also you need to pick something that you can already do reasonably well. So perhaps it's something you already do at work. Perhaps it's something you do in your spare time as a hobby or a subject you were good at at school. And if you're looking around and you don't think any of these skills really match your skill set, then just start with some of the more basic skills, things like virtual admin type skills. Uh, formatting, typing documents up, data entry, transcription, basic writing tasks. And then in the long run, you can perhaps look to learn more skills as you start to build your profile and build your skill set. You might want to progress to things like coding, graphic design, video editing. You can learn almost anything these days online, especially by looking on YouTube. And there are some really good course sites out there you can use like Udemy, where they have lots of courses on things like marketing, graphic design, web design, lots and lots of different subjects. Of course, these skills will take you a long time to learn, but if you do start to pick up some more of these higher value skills uh, you can charge a lot more from them and that means you can earn a lot more in a week or a month from this side hustle so one way to do this is you could start off offering really basic services and in the meantime you could be learning some more advanced skills and then start to slowly bring them into your freelance offering and the next thing you need to do once you've picked what services you're going to offer is you need to create a profile so a profile is a bit like a social media profile but it's just on these freelance websites instead it's the first thing a potential buyer will see when they're thinking about buying services from you so it needs to look really good and it needs to explain to them why you're the best person to buy from. So a few tips I'll give you in creating a good profile for a freelance website are one is to pick a very specific niche of services to offer. Um, and the reason to do this is because buyers want to buy from experts. They don't want to buy from a jack of all trades type. So to give you an example of how this works, if you wanted to get a haircut and you were given the option of choosing a hairdresser who does nothing but cut hair all day, or a person who does a bit of web design, a bit of gardening, a bit of cleaning, and a bit of hairdressing, you're probably most likely to choose the full-time hairdresser because they are the expert in that area. So when you're creating your profile, you wanna come across as that kind of expert, someone who focuses on a particular area and specializes in those services. And the second tip is to add a photo. Add a real photo of yourself because it just creates a bit of trust when buyers are looking at your profile if they can see your face. And three, think about what the buyer wants. Put yourself in their shoes and if you were a business owner looking for these kind of services, what would you want? Would you want a quick turnaround? Would you want accuracy? Think about all of those topics and make sure you're addressing them when you write the profile. So once you've decided on the services you're going to offer and you've built an attractive profile, the next thing you need to do is start bringing jobs in. And there are two ways of doing this. The first way of doing this and probably the most effective way of doing this when you first start is to bid on projects that have been put onto the website by business owners. So for example, if we look at people per hour and we go to the search button here, we go to search for projects here we can see a big list of projects that have been posted by business owners who are looking for writers to create content for them. So you simply scroll through them, pick the ones that interest you and that you're confident that you can do, write a proposal and that will go straight through to the business owner who then may or may not select you. Now in the early stages you may find that you get lots of rejections and you certainly won't win every job that you bid for but if you keep plugging away, keep proposing for jobs, I guarantee you that you will start to get some in and you'll slowly start to build that profile feedback and it will get easier and easier as time goes on. And the second way that you can attract buyers is by creating your own mini adverts within the platform. So you'll need to use a mixture of these two approaches and either way you'll probably find it very hard to win jobs in the early stages because other sellers out there will have lots of feedback and when you first start you won't have any. So the best way around this that I've personally found works is to start off offering really really low prices because if you offer low prices you will attract at least some buyers um, and then you can start to slowly build your feedback as you complete work for people, ask them to leave feedback for you. And as you start to grow that feedback, the other buyers will then start to trust you more and you can slowly start to raise your prices. When I worked as a CV writer on People Per Hour, I started off charging £10 for a CV, but over time, as I slowly built my feedback, I was able to raise that to £100 a CV. So if you stick with it, you can make it a lot easier to actually win jobs and bring work in, and you can slowly start to increase your prices. The second side hustle on this list is task outsourcing websites. Now these sites are fairly new, but basically what they allow you to do is search for and apply for odd jobs. So this could be anything from 
putting someone's flat pack furniture together, to walking their dog, to cooking a barbecue for them. There really is a huge variety of things that you can do on there and all of them require kind of basic skills or skills that are quite easy to pick up. So this can be started really quickly. It's just a case of signing up to the websites, which can be done in a few minutes. And once they've verified you, you can start doing jobs in a few days. They're cheap to start. They literally cost nothing to sign up to. However, when you start providing services to people, the website will take a small percentage of the fees that you charge. They're totally flexible because you search for the jobs that interest you and you only have to do the jobs that you apply for and want to take on. And of course, there is plenty of growth potential with this side hustle because you can, in a similar way, to the online freelancing you can start to build a profile build more feedback and as you do that you'll get more trust from buyers which means you can increase your prices and of course you could potentially use this as a stepping stone into starting a niche service business of some kind so how do you get started doing task outsourcing so firstly you need to sign up to one of these major task outsourcing websites the main ones in the uk are airtasker and taskrabbit i'll put links for those in the description but i'm sure if you were to run a google search there'd be a few more out there as well signing up is really quick you'll just need to enter a few details and then they will ask you for some kind of id verification once they've verified your id you can then start applying for jobs within a few days so then you need to decide on what sort of task services you can offer now if you have a look on these sites you'll see there's a big demand for handyman type work so DIY type work garden clearance things like that um, so have a look around and see what kind of services match the skills that you already have or pick some basic skills that are quite easy to learn and then you create a profile and again it's similar to the online freelancing you wanted to create a nice attractive profile that tells people why they should hire you is very clear about the services you can offer and again put yourself into the shoes of the buyer and try and think about all the things that they need and mention them in the profile once you're signed up and you have your profile already again there are two ways that you can actually win jobs on this platform the first is that buyers can actually search and contact you directly so you won't have to do anything for that particular method but you can also be more proactive by searching for projects posted by potential buyers um, so for example somebody might say i need someone to come around and put my flat pack table together you would simply apply for that job directly via the platform and then that person would choose whether or not to hire you for that job so again it'd be a case of looking through lots of these projects applying to plenty of them um, and trying to get in as many as possible and again you may find it difficult to land jobs in the early stages because once again you're competing with people who already have feedback so what i would suggest again is to go in at a low price initially to attract some early buyers and then once you've had a few projects under your belt and you start to build some feedback you can then slowly start to rise those prices and you'll also find it easier to win jobs when you've got a better profile the third side hustle on this list is listing airbnb experiences now i'm sure you know who airbnb are they are the huge global platform who allow homeowners to rent out their properties to tourists but they've also recently started allowing people to list experiences on the platform as well as properties so these could be anything from local walking tours um, or tours of historic buildings, restaurants, cafes. It could be an art lesson in your front room. It could be a coffee tasting experience. It really could be anything. If you have a look on the platform, there are lots and lots of different options on there. So what this allows you to do is to offer one of these services and list it on the platform. And when people are renting properties in your area, Airbnb will then show your experience listing and people have the potential to then come and book that experience with you. And generally speaking, the more unique the better with these people tend to be looking for unique experiences that they can't find anywhere else and aren't available with the mainstream holiday operators so the good things about this side hustle is that it can be started quickly you sign up to airbnb experiences you need to get verified by providing some id and proof of address and once you've done that you set up your page and start selling your experience right away it's cheap to start because it's totally free to sign up as a seller of an airbnb experience but airbnb do take a cut of every sale that you make of course so you need to factor that into your pricing and of course it's very flexible because you set the days and the hours in which you choose to deliver these experiences but of course it would be best to offer these experiences at the weekends because your main customers are going to be tourists and of course there is growth potential with this because within your profile page on airbnb there is a feedback system and as you start to grow your feedback and your experience starts to become more popular and well known you can of course start to bring in more customers and raise your prices and you could of course perhaps turn this into a long-term business that you run outside of airbnb in the long run so to get started as an airbnb experience provider the first thing you need to do of course is to sign up to the airbnb experiences platform this can be done in a few minutes just filling out a few simple details they will also ask some verification some id and possibly some proof of address 
Once they verified that, you can then start your listing and you could be up and running services within a few days. Then you need to decide on what sort of service you're going to offer. If you have a quick look on the site, you'll see there are lots and lots of weird and wonderful things out there. I've seen experiences for doing yoga with goats on boats. I have seen experiences for cocktail nights with drag queens. There is a huge range of weird and wonderful things that you can offer. So I would you know, try to pick something that is popular with a unique twist on it. So for example, I saw one the other day for a Harry Potter walking tour of London. So what that person's done is taken something that's very, very popular and just put a little twist on it. So, you know, walking tours of London, there are lots of them out there. So, you know, it'd be very, very um, competitive if you were just to do a straightforward walking tour. But by putting a popular twist on it, like Harry Potter, you're making it a bit more unique, make it stand out more, make it more interesting. Um, and I think that's going to probably make it more likely for people to buy from you. And you might also need to secure a venue to do one of these experiences, depending on the type of experience you're going to offer. For example, if it's a cooking class or a dance class or something like that, you're going to need some kind of indoor space. Now, a lot of people run these in their own homes, which is obviously great because that won't cost anything. Um, but if you do need to hire some sort of venue, make sure you keep the cost down as much as you can. Um, but ideally, you know, you want to do something that doesn't require any venue. So something like a walking tour, a hiking tour, um, a tour of local restaurants or something like that, so that you don't necessarily need a venue to do it. And then you'll need to create a page for the experience. And the way that these experiences work on the Airbnb platform is that when somebody books a hotel or a house or whatever it might be, be in your area the local experiences that are available will also be shown to them and they will market them on a regular basis through the website through emails and things like that so if you have an experience listed in an area where somebody's bought then they will probably show your experience to them a few times and obviously if they're interested they will click on it and have a look so your page needs to encourage people to make this booking with you so you need to give a good explanation of the experience you need to tell people why it's fun why it's unique why they should do it and why they won't find it anywhere else another thing you need to do is include lots of photos and videos Airbnb give you the opportunity to include plenty of images and videos so I would suggest adding lots of pictures lots of videos and giving people a real good idea of the type of thing you're going to offer if it's something you haven't already done then you can of course perhaps do it with some friends so that you can get some footage some pictures and video and then you can look to put that on your experience page and also try to be a bit genuine and personal because with these experiences people are looking for locals and they were looking for real people they're not looking for the sort of usual corporate stuff you get with the big holiday firm so try and be a bit more unique and personal uh, you know when you're writing about the experience and of course price your experience realistically have a look around your local area do some research see what kind of similar experiences are already being done and try to put your pricing around about the same point point. and once you started running the experience i would suggest refining it over time based on the feedback you get for example if there's a certain part of your experience that people really love and they always tell you this then make sure you expand on that or you do more of it if there are certain areas that people are saying that they don't like or you're not getting much good feedback on them then maybe think about putting those out or reducing them the fourth side hustle on this list is starting a local service business now a local service business is just as simple as it sounds it's providing a service to people in your local area so it could be something like gardening house clearance cleaning child minding pet sitting there are lots of options out there and i'll even put a link in the description to some pages to give you some inspiration and ideas for things that you could look at now a lot of people these days would perhaps turn their noses up at the idea of doing a service business but the fact is that they are simple to set up they are in high demand and they have really really good profit margins so if we compare them to the factors that i mentioned earlier firstly it could be started quickly now with most local service businesses all you need to do is some sort of simple advertising in the local area um, and you might need to buy some really basic equipment and learn a couple of basic skills and then you can get started usually within weeks or days local service businesses can be really cheap to start as well so you'll probably need to do some sort of advertising in the local area which can be done relatively cheaply and you may need to buy some equipment but a lot of them don't even require equipment so for example if you were doing house sitting pet sitting child minding something like that you wouldn't even need any equipment they're flexible so most local service businesses can be run around a regular job they can be done on the weekends and evenings and in fact a lot of people will prefer to actually have these services done during those periods they have growth potential so a local service business definitely has the potential to grow into a full-term or long-term business if you like you can start to build up regular customers you could even hire staff expand to new areas so there's plenty of potential there so how would you get started in setting up a local service business well firstly what you need to do is you need to pick a service that you're going to deliver so you need to deliver a service that a you can carry out so it needs to be a skill that you will 
already do or it needs to be something you can learn pretty easily. Um, and also you need to pick something that's in fairly high demand in your area. So for example, there's no point in starting a gardening business if your area has no gardens. You need to pick a service where people already need the service and you're simply getting in there and delivering it. So have a look around your local area, look about, see what's needed, see what services people are already using, have a look in the local paper or any kind of other local advertisements that tell you what services are already being delivered. And if you're thinking of starting a particular service and you see there are competitors in the area, don't be put off by that. Generally speaking, if there's already businesses offering that service in the area, that's a very good sign because it means there's already a demand. If, however, you're thinking of starting something and you see that there's nobody offering that service in the area, then that means you'll need to do a bit more research to make sure that there is some demand for the service because the last thing you want to do is start a business for a service that there's absolutely no demand for in your area. So as I said, I will put a link in the description below for some ideas for service businesses to give you some inspiration. Um, and you can also just run a search for local service business ideas. There will be lots of information out there to give you some inspiration to get started. Then once you've picked the area you want to get into, you need to start researching your competitors, see what sort of services they offer, what prices they charge. And ideally you want to put your pricing a little bit lower than the people that are already out there because they're established people. So in order to get some new customers in, you probably better off starting off with low prices to try and attract some early buyers. And then what I would do to get started in this is to print off some business cards or some leaflets. So, you know, something like 100 or 200 business cards or leaflets. Uh, you can get really cheap deals on these from websites these days. You can even sometimes get um, free offers for free business cards. I'll put some links in the description to websites that offer these. And if, if there's any free deals, I'll put those in as well. So within those leaflets, you need to describe the services you offer and your charges and put your contact details in there. And then once you've got them printed up, uh, you then simply deliver them either directly to local houses in your area, or you could put them up in local buildings such as community centers, shops, etc. But generally speaking, the best way is just door to door, hand deliver them because you can do it yourself and it's completely free to do and you make sure that the leaflets are actually getting to your potential customers. And the second thing I would do with this, and this is not essential, but I think it would really help, is, is to get a website. So these days, getting a website doesn't have to be expensive or complicated. There are lots of DIY website builders out there that allow people with no coding or website experience to actually build a really professional, good-looking website. Um, things like Squarespace, Wix, GoDaddy, Shopify, I'll put links to all of these in the description. And basically you can sign up to these. There's usually a small monthly fee. Um, you know, we're talking five, 10, 20 pounds a month, maybe tops. Um, and it will allow you to build a good looking website and, and put in all the details you need. And the two reasons I would suggest getting a website is A, it just makes you look more professional and B, it makes it much easier for you to gather inquiries. So let's say for example, if you leaflet 100 people and you just put your mobile number on there, that's fine, but then of course you'll have to be managing that. You'll have to be picking up all the calls, responding to all the messages, um, and it will take a lot of time out of your day, especially if you've got a busy full-time job and you can't keep answering the phone. So if you have a website, it will allow people to either email you directly or go onto the website, fill out a form, and then you can just go and look at the responses at the end of every day and start getting back to people and booking the services in. And one tip that I think is really Really important when you're looking to start and run a local service business is to try and get regular customers booked in because if you can get regular customers booked in you then start to get some form of recurring income which means you're getting you know a regular guaranteed income every month or week from those people so to do this you could offer your customers perhaps some kind of incentive to book in with you a second time after you've delivered their first service um, perhaps it could be a discount or a loyalty card or something like that but however you choose to do it the key is to develop some way of keeping those customers coming back and keeping those regular payments coming in. The fifth side hustle on this list is attending focus groups. Focus groups are groups of people who are brought together by companies to test their new products or services. They basically pay for you to spend a day or several days sitting with them, discussing the new product or service and giving your opinions and feedback. It's by no means my favorite side hustle on this list, but it's definitely a means tested way of earning a few hundred pounds a month with fairly minimal effort. It can be started quickly simply by signing up to a focus group website. It's cheap to start. In fact, it costs nothing to sign up with these sites. And in terms of flexibility, it's actually not hugely flexible to be honest, because you are very much guided by when the focus groups are available from these companies. However, you are free to pick and choose the ones that you can attend. So there is some degree of flexibility there. In terms of growth potential, again, not a big one, but you can of course look to become a regular focus group member for certain companies, um, but there's no way you can really turn this into a long-term business or career. So how do you get started getting into focus groups? So it's not really a huge detailed process to get started in focus groups. Basically, all you need to do is sign up to one of the big UK focus group websites. So I'll put a link 
to these in the description below. And once you're signed up with them, you simply wait for them to contact you with suitable focus groups for you to attend. So this is more of what I call a background side hustle. It's something you sign up for. And then if you get a call, you'll go into one of these focus groups and you could earn potentially a few hundred pounds just from one session from a day or two days. So it's just something that's worth having in the background, perhaps while you work on other side hustles too. And the focus groups themselves aren't particularly stressful or difficult. So it's a fairly way of earning extra income. So that brings me to the end of the video. I hope you found it helpful. And of course, if you have, please hit the like button. Not only does it help out the channel, but it allows you to save the video so you can come back and review it later. And of course, there are plenty more videos on the channel to help you land the jobs you want and increase your income. So if you are interested in those topics, head over to the channel homepage and have a look around. I'm sure you'll find some helpful content on there. So thanks very much for watching and best of luck with your new side hustle venture.